Good morning, Sec 3 History students. This is Mr. Xiao, and today I'll be teaching you the skill of the weighing essay. Uh, before I start my lesson, please have your writing materials and this uh, worksheet with you. And at any point, if you need to speed up, slow down, or pause the video to better suit your learning pace, uh, please feel free to do so. The weighing essay um, comprises two skills, actually. Um, so you can write this down as I type it. The first skill is to uh, explain a factor or argument using PU. This is a skill that you may have seen in the explained essays that we taught in lower secondary history. Uh, the second skill is to, to weigh or compare between uh, two factors or arguments with a deeper criteria. And this second skill is going to be new. So I repeat, the first skill is to explain the factor or argument using pill. And the second skill is to weigh between two factors or argument with a deeper criteria. Uh, so let's highlight. The weighing essay asks you to evaluate a historical statement. In all essay weighing essays that you encounter, uh, in this syllabus, you will only encounter weighing essay types. So there will only be one uh, essay type to master this essay type. Um, a statement or a claim or a thesis will be presented to you. So this statement, uh, you can also call it a claim, you can also call it a thesis. Uh, and your job is to first explain the statement, claim, or thesis. Uh, that is, you agree with it, and then you demonstrate why it is true. And then uh, you will refute the statement, claim, or thesis. That is, uh, you look for an opposing argument or viewpoint, and then you demonstrate why that opposing argument or viewpoint is also true. In other words, you need to do perspective taking. You need to realize that for every historical issue or statement, there could be multiple perspectives, uh, and each of these perspectives may have its own validity, its own evidence, and its own uh, explanations to support uh, that perspective. Therefore, you have to argue both sides of the statements, agree and disagree. And in the statement questions, typically the agree statement is given because that is the statement given to you. Uh, if this is a bit abstract, you'll be clearer as I go through the first page of this worksheet. Uh, then you need to counterattack the statement that you are given. So that one requires a bit of originality and a bit of uh, knowledge. Each statement requires a PU, each factor requires a PU argument. So that is point, evidence, explanation, link. Um, and I will recap this part of uh, the essay writing. It concludes with a weighing paragraph. This is what's new. Uh, using a deeper criterion, such as time period, short term or long term, this might be one of the most common deeper criterion you use. You would say uh, one factor is more important because it's a long-term factor. The other factor was only a short-term factor. So you have to evaluate and, and, and explain uh, the time period, the time horizon on, on which both factors operate. This is a very common technique. Uh, another technique is sufficiency. So this one factor was enough to explain the whole historical phenomenon. We don't need the other factor. Uh, it could also be the type of uh, factor. One is an underlying cause, one is a trigger cause, one is an um, approximate cause. Um, there is also there are also more examples of criteria that we will encounter as we write more essays. Uh, so this is really um, uh, a fact, uh, an artifact of practice. Uh, the more essays we practice, the more you see, the more I grade your essay. So you need to submit your homework, uh, the more you will learn. So let's take one minute. Please pause my video, uh, history students, and read through each of these statements carefully. I will go through the first statement first. Germany hated the Treaty of Versailles because it blamed them for starting World War One. This should be a statement that Talk, uh, taps on the familiar topic, the Treaty of Versailles. We said that the Treaty of Versailles ended World War One at the Paris Peace Conference. The Big Three agreed on the Treaty of Versailles as a way to punish Germany and as a way to forge a new world. Uh, so 
the statement presents a factor. The statement says, right, Germany is unhappy because of the blame for starting World War One. In other words, the given factor here is war guilt. So you would start the essay by saying, I agree, it is all war guilt because they say it's all Germany's fault, so Germany is not happy. Uh, then you bring up your evidence about Article 231, and then you explain the sense of uh, injustice, unfairness, uh, and, ev and even the historical context that in fact Germany was not the first country to start the war. It was uh, Austria and Serbia. Uh, and then you need to disagree. And then you need to disagree. So what is a possible, what is a possible way to disagree with this statement is to come up with a second factor. Uh, and I am certain that there, there are three that have bubbled up to your mind immediately. Uh, which are the three? It could be territorial losses. That Germany was forced to give up her land. It could be military restrictions. That Germany's army was restricted to 100,000. Basically a police force. It damaged their pride. Uh, it could also be the reparation payments. Uh, and so you could write any of these three factors and that would be your uh, alternative statement. In this case, I'll just leave it as territorial losses. So history students, please pause the video and try the rest uh, on your own first. And let's see how far you've gotten. Uh, treaty of Versailles was a fair treaty. This one is talking about uh, an impact. So the statements typically revolve around two types. It could be a causal statement. Uh, it could be an impact statement. So it's, this one is saying the impact of the treaty was fair. Uh, of course, then the alternative is unfair. I think this is, is quite clear. Uh, what about this? The economic terms of the Treaty of Versailles had a greater impact than the territorial terms. How far do you agree with this statement? Explain your answer. Um, you're weighing up two impacts here. Um, but in fact, this is a causal statement. It's the cause of uh, German suffering, in a way. So it could be economic versus uh, territorial. The most important cause of German hatred of the Treaty of Versailles was reparations. Again, this is a, a causal statement. Cause of German hatred. Uh, this is reparations. Uh, it could be military restrictions. Okay. This one. The League of Nations failures can be traced to the uncooperative attitude of the great powers. It could be attitudes versus um, structural weaknesses. The League of Nations failed to coll provide collective security in the 1920s. Um, here, there is, uh, there is a time period given. So we have to be clear because history is about the past. When they restrict the time period, you cannot use examples outside of this time period. Uh, this is actually an impact statement, right? Impact of League in 1920s. Um, so it could be failure versus success on collective security. And during the 1920s, the League of Nations was a success. Once again, this is clearly an impact statement. Failure versus success. These two questions are in fact very similar. Uh, these two O-level questions, but one of them is slightly harder than the other. Uh, and in fact, it is the uh, 2017 question that is harder than the 2019 question because it restricts your answer to the idea of collective security. Whereas the 2019 statement or question uh, expands the scope to anything. So you could talk beyond collective security. You could speak about... Um, its successes in uh, labor rights, for example, or its success in forging a different kind of diplomacy in the world. Uh, so sometimes we have to be uh, attuned to the demands of each question. So can you please go through and highlight, highlight each question on the factors? In fact, I would say that the 
surprisingly, the most structured and scoped question is this O level 2015 question. Uh, because it not only gives you the given given statement about the economic terms, it even gives you the contrasting factor, the contrasting argument on territorial terms. So you didn't even have to come up with your own second alternative factor. Whereas for the other questions in general, um, of course, fair versus unfair or success versus weakness, the contrast is clear. Uh, but when you look at things like... Um, the failure can be traced to uncooperative attitudes or the, the hatred for the treaties because of the war guilt. You, it only gives you one factor, so you need to have historical knowledge to generate a second factor. Okay. Um, and we are still on page one because we are, have to be clear on how we analyze the question. Um, so at the bottom of page one, um, let's summarize what we have learned. Right? When analyzing the question, we need to identify the given factor that's one so in this case uh the given factor could be you know things like war guilt fair uh successful uh fail failure etc and then we need to uh, generate an alternative factor uh so it could be territorial losses unfair failure And we need to identify the question focus. So this is the part where we say, oh, what caused German anger or hatred um, or the impact of lead on the world? So again, we want to have the factor. We want to have both factors and we want to know the focus. And when we have the factors and the focus, we are able to start our PU arguments explaining from factor to focus. And this is what we have been doing since Act 2. And I, this is the next part of my lesson. How do we explain a factor? How do we craft a one-sided argument? If at any point you need to, uh, to pause and, and write down your notes, please do so. Um, otherwise, Otherwise, I'm proceeding to page two on the Q arguments. Okay. And so here's a sample question. In fact, the first question we saw earlier, which is uh, Germany hated the Treaty of Versailles. And so now we are doing full on question analysis. This is in fact our question focus. Because it blamed them for starting World War II, this is our given factor. Please highlight and annotate uh, alongside me because because uh, these habits or uh, techniques routines of question analysis will serve you well especially under time conditions when you need to think very quickly you you can't pause and do and look back and say what's my step one step two it needs to be sort of a habit where you see a question and you attack it immediately you're like okay Focus is this, given factor is this, I'm going to start planning out my argument. How far do you agree with this statement? This is actually your ATQ, right? We have seen ATQ before. In other words, your ATQ would be agree and disagree. So writing out the essay, we start with the ATQ. I want you only to look at the, the left column. Okay, we start with the ATQ. I agree, I agree. And then you state the point. The point is actually... Right? Factor to focus. I agree. G Germany Germany's Germans hated the treaty because it blamed them for World War One. In fact, you are just restating the statement, and that is fine, that is correct. But now you need to elaborate. You need to, to give an example. So what's the example? Highlight Article 231 of the of the treaty was the war guilt clause. Uh, hi highlight Article 232 made Germany pay reparations on the basis of Article 231. So this is the most important evidence you need to have about Article 231 called the War Guild Clause. Um, okay, so we know something about the War Guild. We know something about blame, that the treaty said it's all Germany's fault. And how does this connect to German hatred? 
So evidence, in other words, is actually some historical facts you need to throw out. An explanation is about using these facts to prove the question focus um, or connect to. Um, so how does all this lead to German hatred? Why is it that if you, someone blames you for something, you are not happy and you, you, you hate them? Um, because they found the treaty to be biased. So the sense of unfairness has to come out. Um, and because, in fact, the war was started between Austria and Serbian, Serbia, not Germany. So it's biased, it's unfair, it's wrong, uh, there's injustice, and that leads to German hatred. So these key words about unfairness, injustice, and biasness have to come out in your explanation. Uh, but there's a, further, there's a further development to this. Because being blamed for the war, meant that the Germans had to pay for war damages. So this was the legalistic link between Article 231 and 232. Only by making sure that Germany is culpable, responsible and blamed for the war, can the ally countries, the allies, legally force Germany to pay for the war. Right? This was a legalistic argument, a legalistic turn. And so war guilt could be said to be the basis for reparations. Okay, and so I have explained this one factor and I conclude with the link. The link is a restatement of the, of the point. The link just states again, thus, Germans hated the treaty because it blamed them for World War I. Um, the link can be, can be skipped. The reason why the link is the final step of a PUS, PU paragraph is because often, uh, especially for history students, you have so much knowledge you want to show me that you forget the whole point of your argument and you go and write a, a textbook. And then the, es the, the essay is completely irrelevant to the question and you have lost time and you have lost relevance. And so the link is sort of there to capture your attention back and say, wait, what is my question? What exactly did I set out to prove? If you are clear and you write a tight paragraph throughout your PU argument, you do not need the link. You, after explaining, you can leap straight to the uh, second factor, the alternative argument, the opposite argument. And so you would start the second paragraph. The first paragraph was, I agree. The second paragraph starts with, I disagree. I disagree. Because in fact, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't the war guilt. It was territorial losses. So notice that, notice that the idea of blame, the idea of war guilt was given by was given by the statement is a given factor but the idea of territorial losses you have to come up with it on your own the contrasting factor you come up with your on with it on your own it may be your own idea uh, which means that when you are analyzing the question at the start of the paper uh, the first thing you might do is to identify the given factor and then identify your own contrasting factor uh, and then start planning your PU arguments by identifying the focus. Uh, so what are some of the losses? Germany lost 10% of her land and 13% of the population. Often we forget these numbers 10 and 13. Just If you write just 10% of land and population, it will be accepted. Um, this included the Polish corridor, your favorite corridor, everyone's favorite corridor, uh, Upper Silesia, Danzig and Alsace-Lorraine. Alsace-Lorraine is another important one. Uh, is the part that France demanded back from Germany. The overseas colonies were also taken away. As a result, Germany's national pride was hurt over Germany's reduced size. Everyone thought, you know, Germany is no longer as big as it was. Are we even a great power? And Germany is now humiliated, which caused it to be angry and hateful. Now pause the video and try a second argument. Try it out. Try it on your own. Let's take a look. Another argument possibly could be that um, the reduced German territory caused loss in its natural resources like iron, 
which damaged its industry and economic recovery. This led to suffering and anger amongst German people. Because Germany lost land that had resources, it also affected its economy, uh, and therefore people had lower incomes, had lower standards of living, and this led to anger and resentment. So therefore, Germany hated the treaty because of territorial losses. Okay, so we have two tight PU arguments. Um, and we are going to do weighing. How do we do weighing? Uh, before we do weighing, please read these two arguments on your own again. Uh, furthermore, territorial losses, we can say territorial losses uh, led to reductions in Germany's natural resources like iron and coal, which damaged the German economy. This meant uh, lower standards of living which led to suffering and anger. So because Germany loses land, uh, Germany loses the resources on that land, uh, then Germany, uh, German people have less work, less business, and they have less income, and therefore they have to suffer, and therefore they would hate the treaty. Uh, so these are connections that prove how territorial losses lead to German hatred. Thus, Germany, Germany stated the treaty because of the territorial losses. And so, at this point, I invite you to read through the two PU paragraphs you have we have constructed. Uh, think about how each factor led to the focus. Think about how each factor led to the focus. Uh, and then we talk about weighing. So now we are on weighing. Uh, weighing is about using a deeper criterion to, to, to weigh the two factors and say which one is ultimately more important. Um, again, our deeper criterion could be a uh, time period, could be sufficiency, uh, could be necessity, uh, could be type of cause. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to go through two sample weighing paragraphs I've constructed for you to see an example of, of weighing. Um, let's start with saying territorial losses. So weighing always starts with your, your claim. Uh, in this case, your claim is territorial losses are bigger uh, because the criterion is here, because the damage to livelihood was more concrete and permanent for ordinary Germans. So in other words, you can annotate at the side, this weighing is the, the, the criterion here is about the long-term impact. So you have signaled to the examiner immediately that you are weighing uh, loss, territorial losses and, and uh, war guilt in terms of its, uh, its impact factor. Highlight, due to territorial losses, Germany lost in the important industrial land, caused Germans to become poorer, caused Germans to become poorer, and many ethnic German, Germans became ethnic minorities with reduced rights and privileges, causing them great insecurity. And so this state is a very long-term state, right? Once you're in a new country, you're outside of Germany, you, you, you cannot come back. On the other hand, although war guilt is, is something that is, you know, frustrating, like someone has blamed you for the war. In fact, the war guilt had little impact, concrete impact on the day-to-day -day living of the ordinary German, right? So even though... Uh, you are not happy that someone says you're at fault. When it comes to living your daily life, how does, how does this sort of words on a treaty really affect you? Maybe not as much as, as how a loss of income would affect you. And so Germans have hated the painful territorial losses much more than being blamed for the war. So this is a, a way of showing how the impact on ordinary Germans' lives differed between the two factors. And, and you have really said one of them is more concrete, more permanent, more important, and that's territorial losses. Okay, what if you wanted to go with 
the other the other factor um so let's take a look how would that look like we could try it ultimately highlight the war guild clause was more damaging okay because germany's war guild clause justified the harsh punishments ah this is an argument from necessity that germany's war guild clause was the basis was the basis of everything else. Like, war guilt is the most important because all the other things come about from war guilt. The war guilt clause laid the legal and moral basis of all the consequences that the Allies imposed on Germany. We talk about 231 and 232. And in fact, you could even say, why was Germany being stripped of all the ter uh, territory because Germany started the war. So if they are at fault, we can do anything we want to the to the to the losers that were also the culprits, right? Uh so it was more frustrating because not only not only did Germans get blamed unfairly for the war, this blame was in fact translated into a concrete direct harm in terms of making Germany pay. And because war guilt is the basis of territory losses and reparation payments therefore now war guilt is the most important factor and so this is a criterion on necessity so one was on the long-term impact and was on, one was on necessity either weighing paragraph you wouldn't write both you would write one weighing paragraph either one will be strong enough to be credited for a bonus two marks and that is how we do weighing um okay so this has been a Difficult skill to understand. This is a difficult skill to understand. Um, when you look at the next page, which is page three, um, I invite you, I invite you to attempt this page uh, on your own. Um, but first, let's do uh, do the analysis. Was a fair treaty. Treaty of Versailles was a fair treaty, and therefore your arguments would be fair, clearly fair versus unfair. This is your analysis. This is how you write the. Uh, the two pews. One pew is fair, one pew is unfair. Um, I've done most of the work for you here. You can just do the explanations on your own. Uh, and then about weighing, uh, I've also given you the the criterion for each weighing paragraph. Uh, and invite you to try it on your own. Okay. Actually, perhaps I'll do it for you, just, just in case. So, so let's take a look. Uh, the Treaty of Versailles was a fair treaty. Uh, for example, Germany imposed an even harsher peace on Russia. So Germany did something worse to Russia when Germany won against Russia in, in World War I. They took half of Ger Russia's in industrial land. Germany also illegally invaded neutral Belgium. As a result, the Allies were only giving Germany the same treatment that she herself imposed on Russia. Okay, so this is an argument about Germany already did it. We are doing the same thing to her. Furthermore, Germany was the culprit for attacking and damaging innocent countries and neutral countries in World War One, such as Belgium. And uh, it was only right for the Treaty of Versailles to force Germany to compensate these innocent and neutral countries. And that's the reparations. Okay, so therefore it is fair. Um, let's take a look at unfair. Unfair. Unfair is quite easy. Actually, if you look at the standpoint of Germany, there are so many things I can complain about. It's pretty much my pre our previous argument, our previous essay. Uh, Germany was not invited to the Paris Peace Conference. It was seen as a diktat. And Germany alone was blamed for the war and made to pay full reparations. So this is war guilt. So from the not being not invited to the Paris Peace Conference, Germany felt she had no choice and threatened. Uh, the peace is a diktat. And coerced into to accepting harsh terms that other countries did not have to endure. Furthermore, 
uh, from being alone, from Germany being alone blamed for the war, German the the war guilt cause clause was one sided because other countries provoked World War One, which which made it unjust and unfair for Germany. Um, the war guilt clause also became the basis for extracting money and land out of Germany, which damaged, damaged her people's lives immensely. And therefore, this is unfair. Okay. Uh, so this these could be your arguments, your explanations. And then you will go into, finally into um, an analysis of whether it's fair or unfair. Ultimately, you say uh, Germany was is fair because it provoked World War One and indeed caused massive damage to other countries. Um, how we weigh this? How we weigh this? We would say uh, yes. Um, even though Germany was uh, the was made to pay enormous reparations. This was justified by the damage Germany caused to Belgium and France during four years of war. And we could even say um, the suffering from World War I was common for all European countries and not just Germany. Uh, so consequently, Germany's actions towards Russia were simply, uh, simply done back on Germany. And thus, the Treaty of Versailles was a fair treaty. However, you could say it was unfair because the treaty aimed to punish Germany and compromise its own principles such as self-determination. What does that mean? Uh, it means that uh, some countries such as France, France wanted to weaken and cripple Germany alone in order to ensure her future security, irregardless of how the treaty then impacted German lives or European peace. Right, France had a very um, selfish, selfish and very uh, one-dimensional view. Uh, furthermore, um, the self-determination principle was, was unfairly and unevenly imposed in order to weaken Germany, such as by stripping her land and by re and by rejecting Austria's uh, request to join Germany. Thus, the treaty was uh, an extension of political aims by France and it was hypocritical and thus unfair. Okay, so this is a bit of a tricky weighing paragraph. Uh, these are two possible weighing paragraphs that one could come up with to, to highlight the fairness or the unfairness of the treaty and dampen the other argument. Marking scheme. <sighs> Give me two minutes. I'm just going to run through how this weighing essay is marked. Um, first, when you, exp when you identify and explain one argument, you are in L2. So this statement, the economic terms of the treaty had a greater impact on territorial terms. The given factor is economic terms. Let's say I, 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 I agree. I, I talk about uh, what happened in economic terms, uh, the reparations, Article 232, the 
the London the London schedule of reparations, the London conference. So Germany became impoverished and poor. Germans had a lower standard of living. Germany had so many economic problems that that they couldn't solve. This <clears throat> lands your essay in L2. By explaining one factor cleanly, clearly, and strongly, you are in L2. Uh, L2 is a barely passing level. You might not even pass. And so all essays, history students, all essays must minimally explain the agree and the disagree. So then you add on to your, L your agree by agreeing to disagree. You say that it's territory. Why? Because Germany lost 10% of the land, 13% of the population. Uh, the Polish corridor, Danzig, Alsace-Lorraine. This hurt German pride. Uh, this weakened, uh, this reduced Germany's resources. This hurt Germany's standard of living. And by explaining the disagree angle, you can go all the way to L3. Uh, and then you do a valid weighing. Uh, and your weighing paragraph can give you a bonus of up to two marks. And that is the mark scheme for a 10 mark essay. Uh, and in the exam, in the final exam, you have a choice of three different essays. You need to pick two. So history students, what do you realize? You realize you need to have robust and strong historical knowledge to first be able to explain a full peel argument for both sides and secondly uh, you need to be have a critical thinking to come up with the deeper criterion to weigh both 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 factors and so uh, I have completed in this video what I set out to uh, what I set out to do uh, which is to teach you how to explain each factor to the focus via appeal and to weigh two factors using a deeper criterion. And this is the essence. These are the two sub skills that you need for the weighing essay this year. Um, and that's the conclusion of my lesson. The last part of this set of notes uh, has to do with sample essay questions. Uh, for those who are in my class, students in my class, what is your homework? Your homework is this. I expect you to copy out uh, the, the answers on page 2, page 3, and page 4 on full scap. That is, write four full essays. You, can, you need to only write one weighing paragraph for each. Write, write sorry, two, two, three, and four. Write three full essays, only one weighing paragraph on each. And then you have to do the first question of the League of Nations as well. Uh, and then you have to do the first question of the League of Nations as well. So I want four essays three that are given in the worksheet and one by yourself on the League of Nations. Do it all on full scap, staple behind this, uh, this essay notes and submit to me in the next history lesson. All right, that was the lesson. I hope it was clear. Uh, I'll see you, see you shortly.